Now we all know that my favorite jet engine in the world is the GE90, cause it is the biggest and the most powerful, well, although the bigger GE9X, which doesn't fly on rail airliners just yet, will surpass its power. Anyway, with a diameter of a Boeing 737 fuselage and probably the ability to suck up an entire house, this engine can provide 81,000 to 150,000 pound force of thrust, which is just insane. That is five times more than the Concorde engines could do. These engines down here are insanely powerful and insanely huge. Just hear the sound of strength and look at our acceleration. I thought, you know, I feel like the GE90 could be even a little bit bigger. Look, we have quite a lot of space here under those engines, and I feel like we could be able to take off this plane of shorter runways, so why don't we do some modding with the GE90? And the way to do that is either by putting like afterburners to it, that's boring, or actually making the engines bigger. So let's go ahead and do this. The stupidest video in the world, I just realized. Yes, everybody. Do you notice anything weird about the 777 that has the GE 100? I mean, this is like the aircraft of equivalent of like a boob job. Look at that. You know, what I've done here is made these engines just barely big enough to fit in between the wings and the ground. I've increased the size of them by 20%. We now have a compressor area of 116 feet instead of just 80. And that means, of course, that we have a lot more thrust. We now have 127,000 pounds of thrust. We are able to now beat the GE9X, which has 110,000 pounds. Now, of course, this is a little bit riskful. Also, we have a bit of a weight increase. Our empty weight has risen by 28,000 pounds because now our engines are a lot heavier. Now, this is actually quite heavy of a problem. I mean, this is kind of like the normal 777 carrying an extra fully loaded Saab 340 on its back in terms of weight. So, hey, this is going to be good. Also, I think the engine clearance isn't necessarily good. Uh, that's fine. Let's go ahead and see if we can take off. After all, making these engines 20% bigger has made it more than 40% more powerful. Let's see what happens if we go full power on a takeoff. And we can see those numbers rise nicely. Let's go ahead and release the brakes and see what happens. We uh, now should have a very, very much more powerful 777. Now a little bit of nacelle engine scraping might be a thing. But it's nice. It, you know, makes it a little bit more flamboyant. A little bit more action, you know? Now you can see those wings sacking a little bit, but that is just fine. And actually, our weight increase has made it so that our runway use is practically the same. That's kind of hilarious. Come on, go take off now. Oh, we've made this plane actually worse. Oh, come on, full power. Oh, wow, that is not good. Yeah. Well, what I've done is I've also like, you know, put in like a relatively realistic amount of load, bit of fuel in here, which makes this plane very, very, very heavy. Either way, look at that. We have taken off nicely. And now that we're flying, all seems relatively fine, right? And honestly, you could probably fool me with this picture. I wouldn't really necessarily notice that these engines have been enlarged by 20%. So good job there. You probably just wouldn't want to like land hard or something because the engines will just fall apart. But of course, we also have a lot more compressor area here for the reverse thrust. So let's go ahead and see how quickly we can stop. Now, and probably with these bigger and more heavier engines, they would need bigger and heavier landing gear because we are definitely so far above the maximum landing weight, probably landing it will just snap apart. Very fun. I mean, there is a reason that for the new GE9X engine, they didn't really make it much bigger, but instead they actually changed parts of the engine to make it produce more thrust. All right, looking good. Let's go ahead and land now. We are incredibly fast, but I don't worry since we've got the GE100 thrust reversers. Hey, actually, this plane flies quite nicely. Look at this. We've got some good maneuverability in here. Let's go ahead and touch down. Okay, there you go. That was a hard landing, which kind of scares me. Let's go for power into the reverse thrust. I believe in you. We've got a lot of inertia. Look at that stopping moment. No, this plane doesn't struggle at all. And I expected there... Look at this. This worked totally fine. I expected there to be a little bit more flames, you know? But overall, perfect development. Maybe you could make the landing gear just taller and then it could work. Because after all, we've just made a slightly more efficient engine. The bigger, the better. That's the thing about jet. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. How much more can we scale? Well... Not much, unless we put the engines on top 
of the wing. You know, this is a design used all around the world. The Honda jet has engines over the wing. This airliner has a jet engine over the wings as well. They're very tiny, by the way. Hey, okay, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is the GE 180 because it is twice the size of the GE 90. But the problem is it's more than twice the weight um, of the GE 90. In fact, these engines weigh as much as the entire 777 itself. That's, just, that, that's funny. But we now have a ginormous compressor area of 324 square feet um, and three times the power. Uh, more than three times the power of the GE90. Uh, yeah, we now have half the power of the Saturn 5 F1 rocket engine. Um, which can carry things into space. So that's interesting. But you know, we are kind of able to make it work. If we don't fully load this airplane and keep the fuel loads so low that we can only fly for one and a half hours, we can actually stay below the maximum takeoff weight. Um, so let's do that. The problem is I think the APU won't be able to turn on these huge engines. I think it just won't be able to get those things started up using, you know, air power. At least in real life, they shouldn't be able to. Let's, but let's go ahead and see if we can even turn these engines on at all. So here's the ignition. Let's turn it on. Engine number one. Yeah, and as I can, oh yeah, 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 never mind. It's, it's spinning. It's starting to spin. It's actually, the engine is turning on. Can you imagine that? These engines are bigger than the fuselage of the triple seven and it looks pretty stupid yes oh yeah 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 wonderful and look at those engines being on and faithful and this is all great now it is a bit true that these engines now kind of obstruct our view and it looks a little weird and they're not even properly connected but let's see if we can uh take off we've now got a lot of power yes go ahead and release the parking brake we are now developing for 500,000 pounds of what the hell yes and even though we are quite heavy you can definitely wow i don't even want to imagine what it's like flying behind this plane in terms of wake turbulence it must kill you there you go we can take off this huge airliner oh yes and it's nicely agile look at that we can even like do like vertical takeoff kind of things yeah i look at the wake turbulence we're creating dude these are very these are very big squares oh yeah i mean we have to consider we are very overweight now a hundred thousand pounds overweight and despite that the plane flies with extreme happiness the problem is that the bigger weight that we've created um in comparison to the performance upgrade we have uh is not very good all we do here is waste more fuel than needed this is an extremely stupid idea all right let's go ahead and co come back for a landing i really want to see what the reverse thrust is capable of yeah look at the agileness of this plane it is very sporty now that is for sure look at the ge 180s crying for help wonderful i feel like i've made this challenge a little bit too realistic because i mean these engines just look ridiculous but we have literally no performing benefit because they weigh so much this is so dumb all right come on let's come in for a landing now you can do it now we are coming in extremely fast which the landing gear will not like but that is totally fine shut up i am very confident in being able to stop this plane but the landing gear probably won't like this at all yeah yeah Oh, yeah. All right. There you go. That's been a hard landing. Uh, good. Look at the reverse thrust giving its best. And this airplane, despite its extreme weight, is able to uh, stop just fine. This is really dumb. But, you know, we've been doing this for a reason, I guess. Because now with this invention, we should be able to make the 777 a single engine airplane. And that really means very efficient engine. You know, so uh, maybe we should try that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The single engine uh, GE-180 777. We now definitely have the power, the thrust to be able to power a 777 flight in the air. With a bit of advantage in terms of weight. I mean, yeah, this engine does weigh 140,000 pounds. And so we are a little bit restricted on our payloadable weight. But something you can see when I use the fuel slider is that we can fly for 30 hours if we fully brim up the tanks. And this is cool. We only have one engine running after all. One very powerful one. And this is what efficiency is all about. So we don't even need to load in a lot of fuel. Like this is just enough to run for a bit. And suddenly we have a plane that has a lot more performance than the normal 777 and the GE logo is upside down, but with a lot more efficiency. Let's go ahead and see how well this actually flies. I really don't know. I like the funny thing. 
that only one throttle works. It kind of makes sense because we only have one throttle. Let's see how it works. Full power. All right, let's see how this plane flies. I bet if, with that much power in the back, it flies a little bit weird. Let's go and release the brakes. Yeah, we got the engine spooling up to full power. And because of our very high, oh, center of gravity, this thing is like, can like bounce around. Let's see if we can do a normal takeoff. And of course we accelerate quite nicely. Something we have to do is like left rudder apparently. Which is interesting, this plane like automatically turns to the right. Maybe it's something, something I broke, but we actually are accelerating at a reasonable rate. Oh my Taxi. god. Oh. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, look at that. The third plane flies. It flies a little bit crappy, mainly because our rudder is like slightly bro I really don't know what's going on here. But look at that. We have a normal functioning triple seven. Now, the question though, is all this legal can be answered with no, because according to US laws, you can't operate an airliner with a single jet engine. Genuinely, it's not possible. You're not allowed to do it for some reason. Well, to be honest, it's quite understandable reason. You wouldn't want to have a engine failure with this. Like, I don't want to, like, know when this thing is, like, windmilling on a single engine failure, which we have right now, which is a full engine failure. This thing produces so much negative thrust, I imagine. But on the other hand, I feel like this plane must fly really nicely now since we've got a clean slate wing. And so all of the wing surface can be used for a nice lifting. Now, this is interesting. We can definitely see the drag that we've got going on now with this engine. Minus 3,000 pounds. That is not necessarily good. But I imagine also because of our engine situation, this thing should be able to water land really nicely. We're now producing 10,000 pounds of negative thrust of actual drag just of our blades. That's insane. Go ahead and crash it. Let's go ahead and crash it. Yeah. Look at that. Clean slate. This thing can turn into a boat and nothing would rip off wonderful so everybody the ge 180 what do you think i should do with this engine we have a lot of possibility put it on a 747 question mark maybe an a380 let me know in the comments so thank you guys so so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys tomorrow as always good night and a special thanks goes out to my members my supporters guns killer r27 james deram that dude anime gods of gaming derek insider plane nishijitsu finer professional jamal ryland williams and New the York. You've got beautiful names.